I have in my hands a glass of water. I got this water from a bottle of sparkling spring water. It's clean, free of impurities, just plain pure water. On a hot day, a nice cold glass of water like this looks pretty good, doesn't it? But what happens if I do this? What's happened to the water? It's not pure anymore, is it? You can sort of see through it, but it's become polluted. If I drop more in there, it's going to get cloudier. It doesn't look very appealing anymore, does it? You'd have to be pretty desperate to drink this water. You know, we could add water to the glass to reduce the pollution, but no matter how much more water we add, it'll still be polluted. A clean glass of water is like a reputation. If people see you to be honest, polite, a good person who obeys their parents and follows the rules, They'll see you like the clean glass of water, but it only takes one lie, one sin to pollute the water. Suddenly, people don't see you the same way anymore, do they? And you can work and work all you want to improve your reputation, but that sin will still be there. The only way to truly restore that clean glass of water is to dump it out, rinse it, and fill it up again. And the only person who can do that for us is Jesus. Proverbs 22.1 says, A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. It's hard to maintain that good reputation, and none of us are completely spotless. But it's even harder to clean up a bad reputation once it's gone bad. That's why we must always be careful to tell the truth, be obedient, and live a life like Christ so that our reputations don't become polluted by sin. So God created humankind in God's image, Genesis 1:27. Yes, we might have been created in the image of God, but unfortunately, we're not always that good about living as God intended. Of course, we're able to show love and show compassion, and we get to choose between right and wrong, but too often we end up choosing the wrong over the right, breaking our covenant relationship with God, denying that life of holiness, why we were created in the first place, right? That, my friends, is what we refer to as sin. Ever hear of it? Well, we are talking about the confession of sins on this episode of Chuck Knows Church. Okay, first of all, we should talk about the difference between sin and sins. Immoral acts, transgressions, these are what we call sins with an S. Well, uh, all right, uh, let me try this. It's the difference we sometimes refer to as sins of omission and sins of commission. First, sins of omission. These are acts left undone, omitted. Things that God expects us to do, but we don't do them. They're sinful because they're things that we don't do that we are supposed to do. Now, sins of commission, on the other hand, are overt sinful acts. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. Those Ten Commandments, right? They're sinful because they're something we do that we're not supposed to do. Now these are real enough and they're serious, but they're, they're not really the essential issue here. Now sin, in the singular, is our willfully turning away from God, making ourselves the center of life, choosing our own will over the will of God. Now this sort of separation only God can heal, so we, we long for that reconciliation, salvation, redemption through God's radical act of love, something only God can provide. Now, most Protestant churches believe nothing stands between us and Christ. Only Christ is necessary between God and the Christian in order to be forgiven for our sins. Now, the gospel tells us that forgiveness is possible because of Jesus Christ. Now, some confess their sins even privately, believing that's all that's needed for God's forgiveness. Still, others feel it's necessary to confess your sin to another. And still, in other denominations, it's required, if a wrong is done, to confess to the person who has been wronged as well as to God. In the United Methodist publication, This Holy Mystery, it says to pay particular attention to 1 John 1, 9, where it says, if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Repentance of our sin is answered with forgiveness because it is proclaimed in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. If you'd like to know more, be sure to ask your pastor. Tell them Chuck sent you.